Welcome back to Switzerland. Right now we have political commentators talking Qantas. We also have business commentators, radio shock jocks, and even probably the galah at the local pet shop are all talking about the flying kangaroo. But let's talk to someone who can actually value a company like Qantas. That man, of course, is Roger Montgomery, Chief Investment Officer at Buckland Investment Management. I'm oh, sorry, Montgomery. <laughs> David will love that. No, I know he will. David will okay. love it. Couldn't help it. It's my show. My I can deputy, I can by the way. He is not lieutenant. my deputy. I call him your lieutenant. He is, uh, he is the CEO of Montgomery Investment uh, Management. Yeah. But we are, you look at the American company, the, the founder and chairman is still hovering above. But still, yeah. let's not fight about that. We'll and fight so about other things. Flying kangaroos, they don't fly. I don't know if anyone's noticed. No, they isn't that fly. interesting? Yeah. They dig off, off the ground for a yes. while. Okay. All right, so. You, you've looked at Qantas before. You've bagged times. them in the past. Well, I don't, I don't bag them. I just report what I see. Yeah, but it's been a negative assessment. Yeah, so the company has, this is the way that we think about yep. businesses. Since 2000 to 2013, yeah. the company has asked shareholders to inject about $3 billion of capital. Mm. The banks have lent about $3.5 billion on top of the $3 billion that they'd bought, they had uh, in debt back in 2000. So, so in other yeah, words... Debt of, of how much? They did a $3 billion, it's about 6 Injection of capital. Billion. Than, Capital's uh, gone up by about $3 billion as six, well. Yeah. And so what's happened, it's gone from 1.2 to about 4 points. Oh, it actually could be 3.5. Yeah. But um, uh, so people have put money into this business. Now, in 2000, they earned about $450 million. Hmm. Right now, they've just lost money. Last year, they lost money. So, how so, did that happen, mate? The normal people would want it. How does that happen? Well, it, it happens. It's very simple. Yeah. I knew it would be. It is very simple. But people don't understand it. But when you charge people $49 to fly, yeah. you can just cover your costs, mm. but you've got no money left over to buy new planes. Okay. And the new planes that you buy are much more expensive than the old planes that you had. Mm. But the accounting standards allow you to depreciate your old planes. Mm. So the expense that estimates the cost of running the aircraft is called depreciation. Yeah. And that's based on the historical cost of the aircraft using a straight line depreciation method. So every year it's the same amount. It's pretty boring. Mm. Yeah. But every year it's the same amount down it's to 10%. a residual value. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But here's the thing. Let's be cr like creative accountants. Mm. Let's make up our own entry. We pull out... The, uh, the depreciation charge, forget about that, that's a made up number anyway, mm -hmm. and we put in a provision for replacement cost of planes, yeah. and you've got to put money aside every year yeah. to have enough it's to a replace the planes, a future yeah. cost. Yeah. If you put that expense in the p &L, you would find there would very rarely be a profit. profit. Yeah. There would very rarely be a profit. And so what airlines find themselves, the situation they find themselves in is that they're constantly having to raise capital or borrow money to renew their fleet and update their fleet. And so today I heard an expert, for example, uh, say uh, on one of the TV programs, he said something like, uh, Qantas's problem started when Virgin emerged as a low-cost carrier with a premium product. Mm. Uh, Qantas should be more like Virgin. Mm. Well, wake up Australia, Virgin lost money as well. Mm. Right? They don't make money. And that is, why, that is why Warren Buffett said in 1999 in Sun Valley uh, in Idaho at the conference, he said, I hope that I would have had the presence of mind. Had I been at Kitty Hawk in 1903 when Orville Wright took off, I hope that I would have had the foresight and the presence of mind for all future capitalists to have shot him down. Mm. He went on to say, Karl Marx hasn't destroyed as much capital as airlines have for capitalists. Mm. You know, so, so airlines don't make money. And it was interesting listening to all the reasons outlined why Qantas is in this position. Qantas is in this position because it's an airline. That's it. Mm. And airlines... It's a are, bad business. They're yourself. bad businesses. Mm. They're bad business. They generate poor returns. And, you know, and, and an interesting piece of advice... Have they I, ever had good returns? Has there been like a golden period where there was no competition, in aggregate, they overcharged and they did well? In modern times, in aggregate, they don't make money. Yeah. There are a few airlines that make money, but the difficulty is you've got capital intensity, which you have to replace your planes. Yeah. You know, some of those tyres, just the tyres are $50,000, right? One tyre. Mm. Um, uh, your capital intensive, your labour intensive as well, and I know Alan Joyce is making some inroads into that, and he's, you know, he's talking about getting rid of 5,000 people in the next three years. Um, but it's capital intensive, labour intensive, irrational competition. Mm. 
not comp normal competition, irrational competition. Then you've got competition in the United States, in the United States where you can go into, a, an airline can go broke, go into Chapter 11 bankruptcy and keep operating as if they don't have any debt mm. and keep operating under Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So, so that you, how do you compete with that? Um, then you've got currency, then you've got fuel that you can't control and, and today... And government-owned airlines... That, that get can their fuel for free yep, yep. Uh, or sovereign-owned airlines. Um, and so, you know, we heard today that uh, Qantas uh, had its highest fuel charge in any six-month period in its life, in its history. Uh, I don't think that's going down. So what, what, what do we make of so-called more efficient aircraft that are going to be, you know, save the company money. Well, as soon as the, air, the, the as soon as fuel goes up, you know, that overrides any efficiency gains. Okay. Part of your tough, tough business. Yeah, a part of your analysis also is to assess management. You're a Buffett um, a follower. Sure. Buffett always says this rate the management. What do you think of the board and the CEO so, of So so I've said this before on your program when John Borghetti joined Virgin, um, management can be an Olympic class rower. They could be the best in the world. And I think we've got two very, very good operators in Borghetti and Joyce. Mm. No doubt about that. But it doesn't matter how hard they row, their effort is wasted on the business boat they got into because they're on the side of the boat is a dirty great big hole and they're constantly being distracted from rowing and bailing the thing out. That's the problem. And, and another Buffett quote, if you don't mind. Um, I love a Buffett he said, quote. He said this, he said, when a business, when a manager with a reputation for brilliance gets involved in a business with a reputation for poor economics, mm. It's the business's reputation that remains intact. Mm, mm, mm. The business will yeah, win. Yeah, it won't change. You know, won't change. Won't, it's very, very hard. The economic, what's going to change? By the way, the I'll play this. I'll play you a little clip to John on Monday night when he's on the program. Sure. Well, but you, I do know. Well, the he, last time I said that, you said thanks, Roger. Coming up after the break, John Borghetti. <laughs> yeah, he was well, outside. But the reality is, he has said the, the, not the same way as you or as aggressively as you have, but he has said, like, you can be doing everything right and all of a sudden the volcano Correct. Just, just ruins your whole business model for six months or a and, year. But even when everything's going right, you've got irrational competition, you've got companies, which is, which is what Alan Joyce talked about today, you've got companies bringing capacity on in advance of demand that sometimes doesn't materialise. Mm -hmm. Then your yields fall, the prices you can sell your seats falls. Okay. Yeah, it's just tough. So, really, so, really so tough. therefore, if, if Virgin is able to survive by having three airlines owned by governments backing them up, sure. should Qantas, if they want to at least Look, survive, clearly, have the same kind of backup? Clearly they should be allowed, they should be permitted to compete with Virgin on a level playing field, but the bigger picture mm. is the tourism industry in Australia. Yeah. If we don't have a national carrier, then what happens you know, we saw it with Ford and Toyota and Holden. Mm. If you've got foreign owners, if something is marginal and it's not making money, they close it down eventually. Mm. What does that mean for some of our towns where currently Qantas and Virgin fly, where in the future they may not? Mm. We may find that not only do we not have manufacturing, but we have a big problem in our tourism industry as well. Mm. And I just wonder where else all those thousands and thousands of people are going to be employed because the government has not had the foresight, I don't mean just this government, mm. successive governments over decades, They've not had the foresight to say, well, you know what, the car industry is asking for a handout. They must be on their knees. We've got to get something else going. They did nothing about that. Mm. So would you give Qantas the AAA debt rating? Uh, I would do everything that I could to support our tourism industry and work for the national interest. Unfortunately, government uh, is, uh, uh, is dominated at the moment by economic rationalists. Now, that's a, you know, a bit of a sort of elitist term, but what it means is that our politicians, when talking about any topic, social welfare or whatever it is, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about the economic... They're all it's Roger Montgomery's, aren't they, when you think about it? Because you, 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 but, right. but, you know, but you invest on the basis of what the numbers tell. But you're I'm, saying a, I'm not running You're saying a, a politician... A, a leader of a country has to make a choice between, and that's the political debate. You have to debate. balance the economic side with the social benefit as well, and sometimes it's not about the economics, sometimes it's about printing money and getting something done for the long-term future benefit of the country. Well, I'm, I'm surprised to hear you have this point of view, but it's great to see you're more than just one dimension, um, Roger. Okay, let's move away from Qantas sure. now. You've done the be your best on that. What have, you, what have you seen from earnings season 
that world because remember uh, yeah it would have been probably just before Christmas even before then you said look I can't see value in the market yes then the market fell yep. well what were we for that no, I didn't so, predict that it was going to no, fall no, no, no. I said it was it was expensive yeah, expensive and but it we fell. couldn't find things yeah and, and then we happy did, you, that. did you find the value there yeah sure we car sales came up for us uh, seek came up for us uh, seek is our biggest position in the Montgomery fund and it was up I think it was up 25% or 20% or something in a day, you know, it was yeah. phenomenal. Surtex was another one, um, and Surtex was up over 20% in a day. Yeah. Uh, so, that, yeah, we found quite a few things. Okay, but the, 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 the point I'm making now is we've gone back close yes, to where... very, very quickly So, are you, are you saying... I'm not seeing value in the market again? Yeah, we, uh, we had our investment committee meeting today, yep. uh, and, uh, and I remember at the end of the meeting I concluded by saying, very, very disappointing, guys. Very disappointing. They all stopped and they all, why is Roger disappointed? No. Uh, disappointing that we can't find things to buy again. No. I think what we're going to find is we're going to find um, a lot of stockbrokers um, scraping the bottom of the barrel for ideas between now and the full year reporting season, which no. will be in August, September. Yeah. Um, we're going to find them, you know, really finding it difficult to come up with ideas because the very good businesses that had great results have run very, very hard. Yeah. The ones that have fallen over, they deserve to have fallen over. The the market is, seems to be at, in a period of what I call efficiency. It's correctly evaluated everything. It's behaving like economic rationalists. It's behaved as you would expect it to behave when things go badly for the companies that have gone badly and vice versa. So, um, uh, or rather conversely, you know, for things that have gone well. So, uh, so at the moment we're not finding many things to buy. Probably the closest thing that we that the closest to value that we can see at the moment um, is probably uh, Woolworths and maybe CSL. Mm. They're the two um, bigger cap that pay dividends. And um, what about this Boynton prediction that the Aussie would go to 66 US cents? Oh, Joe, I hope he's right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but what kind of companies off the head, like CSL is one that would benefit sure. from that. Knowing the companies you do, yeah. when that kind of thing comes into the equation, it certainly would make some companies that look overpriced underpriced, wouldn't it? That's right, but what you have to do is in thinking about currency, you don't bet on you know next year's earnings because the currency is going right. to go down. You've got to look through that period because inevitably the currency goes up and it goes down. You've got to look past that. Well, we made money out of Cockley and we made a lot of money out of CSL when analysts told us you know the currency is too high and they're not making any money. That was the time to buy it because when eventually the currency did fall, everyone re-rated. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to focus on these good businesses. Yeah. So so businesses that will do well at you know, any business. Give us good growing, businesses off, off the top of your I'll, head. I'll give you a shock. A one that'll shock you. Yeah. I actually think I don't know about 66 cents. Yeah. You know, You've got one minute. Oh, yeah. I actually think a business like Flight Centre, mm -hmm. um, if the Aussie dollar falls, it'll get hit really hard mm -hmm. by people who believe wrongly mm -hmm. that it's going to suffer when the Aussie dollar falls. Mm -hmm. It's not about the Aussie dollar for Flight Centre. It is all about competition in airlines and cheap airfares. Mm -hmm. And people will travel if the Aussie dollar is low if they can get a cheap airfare. Yeah. And Flight Centre will benefit. Plus. It's just about spread all around That's the right. world. It's a, it's a diversified company. more company. and more of its yeah, revenue from precisely. overseas. So that is an opportunity. If the Aussie dollar does fall, everyone okay. will react. They'll sell the stock, but that'll be the time to Next buy. Next time you're back, I want you to give me five good companies that sure. you would buy on the basis of the currency dropped to 75 or 80%. Okay, so, we'll see okay, you Okay, great stuff. That's the end of the show. Roger, of course, has taken more time than he should have, but he's so enjoyable to listen to. I gave him that time. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week.